make sure to check out my Patreon for exclusive videos never before seen on YouTube. And don't forget to also check out the memberships on my channel page to join and gain access to perks and see videos early. Make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell and be notified of new videos. All the support goes to the production of the channel for better content. Now let's get into the video. Real quick before the video starts, a quick announcement. I have updated my Patreon page and changed the tiers within it, as I'll be posting content on there regularly. The content which will not go onto my YouTube page, from personal life stories and more Dragon Ball content for all of you to enjoy. I have changed the tiers and pricing, as times are hard in the world. So for $1, you can have full access to my Patreon page and the content within it, and it goes towards production and support of my channel. So, if you want to check it out and see some content that will not be on YouTube, go check it out for $1 and show your support. Go join my Patreon, now let's get into the what if. What if Goku had Gohan's potential? Now, we know that Gohan had some insane potential as, even as an 11 year old boy, he was already a Super Saiyan 2, and he was way stronger than his father ever was, while Goku at that age was struggling to fight normal humans on planet Earth. That goes to show you just the difference between Gohan's potential, but it seems like Gohan's potential seems to fluctuate as the plot needs him to be, as sometimes his potential is put throughout the window and they don't use Gohan at all, as his excuses is that he stops training and he becomes super weak. But then when he trains a little bit, he instantly becomes one of the strongest characters again, like how he did against Piccolo. When he was training with Piccolo for a little while, he couldn't even turn Mystic without almost dying. But once when he learned to unlock Mystic again, he was able to fight on par with Blue Goku, which makes zero sense. And now Gohan was able to be on par and knock out Goku in Ultra Instinct and be on par with Master Ultra Instinct Goku, which goes to show just how OP Gohan can actually be if he actually trains and has to drive like Goku Vegeta does. That being said, this is when we're going to have Goku who actually had Gohan's potential. What would happen? Well, same events would happen, with Bardock was still being destroyed alongside planet Vegeta and he would have still sent Goku off like before. Goku would meet Grandpa Gohan, who would still raise the young boy as he would still hit his head as before. Now even the training that he got from Grandpa Gohan, Grandpa Gohan would have noticed how his boy had such amazing power and potential. He would still die when Goku would still turn into a great ape and accidentally kill him, the same as before. Now, this would also mean that Goku would be on his own for a few years where he would meet Boma. Now, as before, both would then agree to work together to find the Dragon Balls. Now, once when they meet Roshi for the first time, Roshi would hand the three star ball and Roshi would be shocked with how powerful the boy was. So, for the gift of them helping out his turtle, he would then hand out the Nimbus and the three star ball. That being said, the same events would have happened with them stopping Oolong the Terror terror rule oolong getting the six star dragon ball and with goku meeting yamsha and par now the difference here is that in their short little fight goku would not be injured to yamsha's wolf fang fist he would have actually been able to easily defeat yamsha and after roshi would use his kamehameha wave to stop the fire at the frying pan mountain finding the seven star ball goku would then become roshi's student with krillin now they would train together for around seven months like before now training with this, Goku's power level was quickly skyrocketing to levels that we never seen before. And under Roshi's training, it was very quickly proving that the weight training and his training regimen was becoming ineffective with Goku. He wasn't growing any more stronger, as Krillin wasn't even able to keep up with him at all. But Krillin is a little bit stronger than before because he has a bigger sparring partner against Goku. Roshi would actually focus more with Goku on martial arts, teaching him more abilities and more power level sets, so Goku knows more martial arts than a little bit than before, but with Goku being such a fast learner, he already has surpassed Master Roshi in all levels. Now, Goku after the 7 months of training, he has a power level of around 600, making him far stronger than anyone in Dragon Ball. Now, why is his power level not higher? Well, you have to think that he's still a kid at this point, he's only 12 or so years old. Secondly, Goku here is not having really anything to push his power even higher, as if he's not fighting somebody stronger than him or equal to his power, and he doesn't have the right things of training to help him, as the best trainer in the world, quote unquote Master Roshi currently, other than Kami, can't really help him out grow stronger, so he got very powerful from Roshi's training, but it's ineffective. So his power level wouldn't necessarily spike, 
as he has no challenges, he's only trained to stay in shape, and he's not really having any new abilities to learn, so his power level doesn't really spike up much higher. Now, of course, with this being said, Goku is far stronger than anyone in Dragon Ball currently. The 21st World Martial Arts Tournament would take place as Goku would easily win. He would easily have defeated Jackie Chung, who, again, is Master Roshi. It would make Goku the winner, as none of them would have a chance at all. Fighting Goku, he would also not go into a great ape like before, so the moon was not destroyed. Now, during the Red Ribbon Army Saga, Goku would steamroll through anyone in his path, with him easily beating General Blue at the base of Korn's tower. Now remember, Goku defeated him at the base of his tower, so Goku, I feel, would still climb to the top like before to train for the Sacred Water. Now, Korn was shocked at the power that Goku possessed, and he definitely thinks that he earned it. That being said, he would have jumped back down, and he would have still easily defeated Mercenary Tao, and he would have defeated the Red Ribbon Army. Now, during the Baba Saga, he would still defeat everybody, of course, Devil Man, who, if Goku was evil, he would have actually been able to kill him, but... That being said, Devilman, Mummy, and he would also have defeated Grandpa Gohan. Thus, Goku would have won the little tournament battle arena. Over the three years, once when Goku continues training, he would only grow stronger and stronger. By the 22nd World Martial Arts Tournament, Goku would have a power level from 600 to now after three years of training and the Ultra Divine Water, his new power level is over 3000. He would have easily beat Tien in their match, and now during the King Piccolo arc, he would have easily defeated the Demon King Piccolo. And this is before Demon King Piccolo could have killed Roshi or Chaozu. Now, Goku would have also defeated Tambourine very quickly, as Demon King Piccolo has no chance. Even if he would have rejuvenated himself and made himself young again, it is absolutely nothing to Goku. Goku was actually bored fighting him. But still, for plot annuity, Piccolo would still be able to spit the egg for Piccolo Jr bring off his reincarnation as before dying he would be able to do this so Kami would then offer to train Goku as now by this point this is for Goku easily fitting Piccolo and Kami might be able to teach him a thing or two something to help him grow even stronger by this point Goku was far stronger than anything on the planet by this point nothing else could have gotten in his way so peace was finally restored for the next few years now during the training Kami would not be, you know, he doesn't really need to restore the moon. And he would also not be able to remove Goku's tail, as Goku wants to keep it. And by this point, Goku, I feel like with his training, he could maybe train with Kami to learn to control the Uzaru state. Or he just knows not to look at the moon when the moon is out. And he just knows the repercussions for it, like before. And Kami's just too weak to destroy the tail. If that being said, he would have a reason for Goku to train. He would state the Hyperbolic Time Chamber, that if a whole day outside of here is a whole year inside of there. And it's harsh. The gravity is at 10 times of that of Earth. Gravity is much higher. The conditions are harsh. It's hard to breathe. It's a perfect training thing place for Goku. Goku would eagerly agree. And this time around, Goku stated that he only stayed for a month in there. And he couldn't stay in there for too long. This time around, Goku would be able to stay for the whole year. Being much more stronger, he would be able to adapt and quickly be able to get used to the gravity and get used to the power of the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. So he would use the Hyperbolic Time Chamber for the entire whole year, increasing his strength much higher than before. Now, during the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament, Goku, of course, he would have still met Chi Chi the same as before, as they still met his kids and he still promised to marry her. They would have their little match, he would have defeated her the same way. He would still agree to marry her, and fighting Tien, he wouldn't even need to really have weighted clothing, as, remember, no weighted clothing can really hold him down by this point, being so much stronger, he would have easily defeated Tien. Having zero effort, Tien knows that he needs to push himself even further to try to even touch Goku at all. Now, Piccolo comments on his power, and that this might prove more difficult than he thought, as Goku was holding back the whole time, remember. As once when Goku would start powering up, Piccolo was absolutely shocked with how powerful Goku has become. He would have easily defeated Piccolo, not having such a hard battle as before, as Piccolo has no chance of touching this version of Goku. Goku would still spare him, of course, as killing Kami, and either or, killing Piccolo would kill Kami, and killing Kami would kill Piccolo, since they're the same being just split into two. That being said, after being married to Chi Chi, five years would pass, Gohan was still born the same as before. Now, Goku stated that he never really trained hard nor learning any new tricks to Piccolo, 
but he still kept in shape and, of course, just enjoyed life. So his power level wouldn't necessarily jump much higher and it wouldn't really change. Now, Raditz would still arrive and would demand about Goku still saying who he was, he was a Saiyan, and why is the planet not taken over? And he wouldn't have that angry sense about him not having his tail, because he has one. And he would be pretty furious that it's not taken care of. Now, that being said, he would then try to demand Goku to do it, and Goku would tell him no. The two would begin fighting. As Raditz would then tap a scouter, seeing that his power level is over a thousand, which would shock him. As Raditz would then try to punch Goku with everything he has, Goku would catch the fist easily. And Goku would then let go, and he began powering up proving a point to Raditz, which would make his scouter rise and rise, as Raditz was in utter shock as Goku then screamed to full power. Raditz was shocked, seeing that his power level was over 10,000, as by this point, this would actually interest Vegeta and Nappa, not the Dragon Ball point, as they didn't hear it. They would want to go see what this power was all about. Now, Raditz would have given up at this point. There's no way he could have defeated Goku. And even if he would have tried to turn into a great ape, he clearly sees that Goku has a tail. This means that he can turn to a great ape too. So there's no way for Raditz to even touch Goku. Now that being said, even though that Raditz did give up, he would then tell him that he apologized and that he just... Raditz would then kind of explain himself to Goku. He would explain that he's kind of stuck on strings by Vegeta and Nappa who tell him what to do because they're so much stronger than him. With that being said, Goku would actually agree, and he would even tell Raditz, Look, it's perfectly fine. I want you to train with me. How long do you know until they get here? As Raditz can hear their intercoms, and he knows that it might take them roughly a year. That being said, he would agree to train with Raditz and his son Grohan to grow stronger. Now, they would arrive at Kami's lookout, and he would even ask about the Hypog Time Chamber that can go in there and grow stronger. But Popo states that the Hypog Time Chamber is down currently, and that he needs to make repairs on it, and it won't be available for a while. So Goku says, well, that's not a good thing. Maybe they can just train here. But Raditz tells him that, I studied your power level. The main person, Vegeta, is still stronger than you, which would surprise Goku and get him excited. He would ask Kami if there's any way that they can grow stronger, as they have a whole year, but they just want to be sure. Kami would then think, and he thinks there might be somebody who knows, a teacher or anything. Kami would then go to King Yema, and ask for a teacher or some kind of way to help him. He would then explain the whole situation to him, and King Emma would then agree, and even though he didn't like Raditz for the horrible things that he did, he would allow it, as he would agree to let Goku and Raditz go run the Snake Way. Now, this would also leave Gohan behind. Now, don't worry, Gohan's still gonna get his love, as he has his stepfather, Piccolo. Piccolo would have taken Gohan and trained him the same as before, with Piccolo having more drive, and more drive in that he knows how powerful Goku is, he knows that Gohan has the same power, he will try to train Gohan even harder than before, and keep himself training too, with the fact that he tries to want to surpass Goku to beat him one day in their rematch, so he can take over the planet. Now, at this point, Raditz and Goku would make it a snake way, roughly around the same time, as it wouldn't really make much of a difference, even though Goku is much faster, they couldn't really fly still at this point. Raditz could, but Goku can't, and Raditz is not going to leave him behind. You could say that Raditz could pick him up and fly, but that's subject to interpretation. They would still run, but either way, they would still have around 80 to 90 days to train under King Kai's tutelage, giving them nearly three months of total training. Now, King Kai was not too fond of Raditz because of his tainted heart, but with Goku reassuring him, Raditz would then teach both of them, teaching them under the gravity, which didn't really affect both of them, but mainly teaching them the Kaioken, the martial arts, and mainly the spirit bomb. And this time around, King Kai would not teach Raditz how to use the spirit bomb, as Raditz's heart is too evil. Goku has a pure heart, and he only trusts Goku to teach him the spirit bomb. It's similar how he didn't teach anyone else the spirit bomb, like Yamcha, Tien, Piccolo, Chaozu, no one else, but he only taught Goku it. For plot reasons, but also because Goku was his perfect student, which he sees that. He also notices how powerful Goku truly was. By the end, he states that he could even keep up with Frieza, which goes to show how powerful he was. He would then tell Goku that you and your brother would easily be able to defeat both these Saiyans, no issue when you get back. Both of them being much faster flying, they would easily then make it back a little bit earlier. 
But Piccolo, I feel, would still sacrifice himself and he would still die to Nappa. And Kami would die as well, losing the Dragon Balls. Now, with Goku and them back, we know that Goku got 18.8 .8 times stronger. But the fact that he had a sparring partner and someone else to train with too, it might make the boost even twice as higher. That being said, that would make Goku's total power level 376,000, and Raz's new power level was actually at 56,000. So Raz could pretty much fight most of the Ginyu Force by himself and be able to hold them off, especially since the fact that he has Kaioken too. Now, once when they arrive, Nappa would kind of go mess, try to mess with Raditz as Vegeta wants Goku. Raditz would have easily defeated Nappa with a single elbow strike, kind of like how he did to Raccoon, and Nappa was down. Vegeta was shocked at the sudden spike in power, as even that spike in power nearly broke his scouter, as Vegeta would then grab it and crush it in his hand, stating that no power level is that high. That being said, Goku and Vegeta's fight would have been anticlimactic. Vegeta only has a power level of 18,000. Even if he turned into a great ape and Goku didn't turn into one himself, Goku would have easily been able to defeat Vegeta. It just wasn't even a competition. That being said, Goku would not really have much effect on Goku, and Goku was far too powerful, as within a few punches, he would have gravely wounded Vegeta, defeating him, and he would let Vegeta go, telling him to leave and to never return. Now, if Vegeta was badly wounded, he would leave as his pride was shattered. Now, Frieza hearing about them talking about the Dragon Balls, he would then make his way to Planet Namek like before to go gain his wish of immortality. Now, with this being said, would Vegeta still have his arc? Yes, but we're going to get into that shortly. Now, that being said, they would still have to go to Planet Namek. Now, with the help of Bulma's help, they would be able to make the ship to go to Planet Namek, bringing Goku, Raditz, Gohan, and Krillin. With Goku not being hurt like before, he would not have to leave a week later to meet up with his friends. Now, thus arriving, Frieza would then show up a few days earlier than they did, as he was still searching for the Dragon Balls. As not many Namics have been killed yet, now during them preparing with Bulma prepping the shop of supplies, Raditz tells her to actually be safe. And they would actually have a little moment, you can see a little spark of love in the air, as Bulma actually does find him a little bit attractive. As, but remember, she's dating Alpsha, but it's Bulma. Now, with them leaving, Raditz and Gohan would go into one group, as then Goku and Krillin would then go into another group to split up to help find the Dragon Balls faster. Now, Goku and Krillin would actually meet Dende, saving him from Frieza's men, as Frieza was standing right there. Goku would then finally meet Frieza face to face. As Dodoria and Zarbon would have tried attacking Goku with a single strike, he would have killed both of them, defeating them both, which would surprise Frieza, but make him excited to see who this Saiyan was. He thought he killed them all. Now, Frieza was more surprised that the Saiyan was here, and Goku would then tell Krillin to get out of here and tell that little Namekian, aka Dende, to leave as well, with the Dragon Ball. He would then tell Frieza that he would defeat him, making the Emperor laugh, of course, as he would step out of his floating chair and power up to 530,000 to full strength. Surprising Goku as he would tap his scouter, Goku would then power up as well, both of them clashing hands, as Goku's power level would then shoot up to 400,000, which would shock Frieza as it would shatter his scouter. He would then fly in full force and hit Frieza into a mountain. Both of them would be trading blows as he would make Frieza destroy his armor. As it was a little sparring skirmish, Frieza would then power up into his second form, shocking Goku at the power level that he just saw. Goku would start to get overpowered by base form. Now, Goku would then get up, his shirt's a little bit torn, as he would wipe his mouth smirking. He would then yell Kaioken and fly in a Frieza. Surprising Frieza as he would fly in and gut punch his stomach, sending the Emperor into the ocean, doing a massive sledgehammer attack. He would then fire a powerful Kamehameha wave as it would cause a massive explosion. As a few seconds would pass, Frieza would then fly right out, and he had some scratches as he would then wipe his lip, stating that he could not remember the last time that anyone ever made him bleed, let alone even hurt him a little bit in this form. He would then commend him, as then Frieza would then use the full power of his second form. He would then fly in, surprising Goku, as Goku couldn't use Kaioken in time, and he would stab Goku in the stomach and the chest with his, both of his horns. And he would then throw Goku off of him into the water. Now Krillin would then see what was going on, 
and before Frieza would then fire a final attack as Goku was sinking to the bottom of the ocean, Krillin would then fly in using a solar flare which would blind him and they would then fly in and save Goku, using this chance to escape, as Dende would then lead them away to Elder Guru, where Raditz and Gohan actually was at, with the help of finding Nail and the other Elder Namekian. That being said, this is when they're going to start healing Goku, as remember, Goku was severely wounded by Frieza's attack. Now, before Dende, Goku, and Krillin arrived, Raditz and Gohan actually got their potential unlocked. Now, with that being said, Goku would quickly be healed by Dende as Frieza was then flying around the planet trying to find them and kill them as he doesn't know where they went off to. Now, Nail would make sure to stay outside to make sure that there is no Frieza looking around. That being said, Goku would then meet Elder Guru. Elder Guru would then complement the same strength in that he st even though he doesn't even know the Namekians, he still gave his life to go fight for them. He would then unlock Goku's potential. This would then make Goku much stronger. On top of the fact that Goku just got a massive Zenkai from a near-death experience. Now, in the original, when Goku was getting a big Zenkai, he went from 90,000 to 3 million. He got 33.3 times stronger. Now, considering he got his potential unlock, now from what we've seen that the initial boost of a potential unlock is around two times the user, the total boost that he would get is 66.6 .6 times stronger which is an insane Zenkai, which would make his power level from 400,000 to 26 million, which is way stronger than he was even during the Frieza saga, and even early parts of the Android and Cell saga in base form. He would then thank his friends, and he would go flop to face Frieza for the second round. Now Frieza would then smirk as he was waiting for him. Goku would then surprise him by easily overpowering him in his second form, he doesn't understand how did he get so strong so quickly. He then remembers that the Saiyans have that ability to where they can grow stronger every time that they're in near-death experiences. Now hold on, where's Vegeta? Where's Vegeta in the whole thing? Well, Vegeta has already been there at that point, and he actually collected the Dragon Ball so he can use for himself, secretly. But the thing was, is that there was only a few Dragon Balls left, he tried to find them, and he was met with Raditz and the others. Now, Vegeta did get a pretty big Zenkai, uh, similar to what he had before, around 30,000 to 40,000. But that being said, against Raditz, it's not enough. As Vegeta would even have a small fight against Raditz, but Raditz was far too powerful. Raditz's power level was easily well over 100,000. As you guys remember, he had a power level of around 56,000. He's around 112,000. With the top of Kaioken, he would have easily defeated Vegeta and told him that you can't even use the Dragon Balls fully anyway. With Vegeta taking another L, he was knocked out. Raditz would actually spare him, as there's just no point killing him. That just wouldn't make sense, as he knows that Vegeta is just a pawn to Frieza the same as before. As once when Vegeta would then awaken, everybody was watching Goku fighting Frieza, Vegeta was shocked, and he believes that Kakarot is actually a Super Saiyan. It must be. With his pride taking another L, he can't do anything else but just watch. Frieza was shocked with how he was easily overpowering his second form. Thus, because of him being outmatched, he would then quickly skip his third form and go into his final form. Goku wants to see Frieza go all out. As in Frieza's final form, Goku and him would then trade blows back and forth, Goku using Kaioken times 10, which is already way stronger than Frieza, but Goku can't use it for long, remember. He would then tell Frieza to go all out. He wants to see his absolute best. As Goku, remember, adapting so well, he's literally in Kaioken times 3 or times 4 or times 2. Like, it's just like a normal form for him. And even in Kaioken times 4, his power level is 104 million. With Frieza powering up, Goku was surprised that he still continued to grow. As the two would begin their fight, as now Frieza at 100%, the two would then fight back and forth, shaking the entire planet. With the still using of much of the Kaioken, Goku was losing a lot of energy. Goku would then hit a full power Kamehameha wave and hit Frieza, and Goku was pretty much tanked on energy. Remember, he used a lot of stamina fighting Frieza with Kaioken, as that power is still not meant, meant to be used for long times. With that being said, Frieza was now getting worried though, as he doesn't want to, as he just needs to end this. This is a similar of when Goku used all his energy to fire a Kamehameha wave or a spirit bomb. He had no energy left. 
Frieza would then aim his finger and then shoot a death beam at Goku, but then it would whiz past him and hit another direction, as it would kill Raditz, hitting him through his chest. Or so they thought. Raditz is alive. That being said, Goku seeing his brother knocked over, as Frieza was planning on killing Dende, Bulma, and Krillin and Gohan next, Goku's hair would start to rise. His anger was soaring, seeing what Frieza did to his brother, as he thinks that Raditz is killed. Goku would then scream, how dare you, as Vegeta was watching in utter shock, as he turned into a Super Saiyan of legend. Now, I want you guys to do the math below with how powerful Goku is as a Super Saiyan. His power level is 26 million currently, times 50. Let me know in the comments what that power level is down below. That being said, Goku would have easily overpowered Frieza in their match. Frieza's blows and attacks are doing zero damage. Goku was still so furious, remember, that he would still tell all of his friends to leave and to just get out of here while he still has control over himself. Vegeta and the others would know to get out of the way. So Vegeta would actually come along with them, and surprisingly, and Bulma, Krillin, Gohan with Raditz would then carry him back. Now, this being said, they would actually leave the planet because of Goku's request, as Bulma wants to honor it alongside with Gohan and Krillin. Now, Vegeta is not going to listen to anybody, but Goku telling him he will. Goku would actually torture Frieza, as a lot of Namekians are watching, amazed that this golden warrior saved them. Frieza never had the chance to blow up Namek like before, as Goku would have caught it either way. Now, Goku would finally end him, as he would tear Frieza right in half, and he would then fire a key blast, destroying him, vaporizing him from existence. That being said, Goku would finally go back to base form and have zero energy, and he would then collapse into the water floating. But then, a large group of the Namekians, as remember, thousands of the Namekians are still alive, they would gently pick up Goku and carry him and set him down as Elder Guru would be there and with the help of Dende they would still heal Goku and help him recover. Now Elder Guru would then thank Goku, honest, for all that he's done and that he's earned to use all the Dragon Balls to wish everything back. Now with the help of King Kai they would wish all their friends back, wish everyone back that Frieza has killed and the last wish is for the Namekians to use as they wish. So, Goku would leave that for them. Elder's Guru time was then passing, as Goku knows that he needs to get out of here, as he wants to head back to Earth since his friends already left to keep up with him. He would then use one of the Saiyan pods that were there, as he would then thank everyone for what they did, he truly appreciates it, and he'll be back one day. He would then leave. Now, unknowing though, they already had coordinates for Planet Yardrat. That being said, Goku basically would then go to Planet Yardrat, and he would meet the Yardradians, or Yardrat people. He would then actually choose to stay for a little while to train. This means that he would learn instant transmission, but the fact that he had Gohan's potential and adaptation and more, he would actually learn the basics of Force Spear Fission and Key Control. He would still leave and head back home, as he would arrive maybe a little bit less time than last time, but similar, it's the same time as last. So, in the original, he showed up about a year, Goku would show up roughly a year later, meet all of his friends again, Vegeta has gotten comfortable on this planet at this point, now we're going to get into the relationships later on in the next what if, but now Goku, as he's back home at his house, he would then hear a knock as he would then open the door to see a young man, and this young man was from the future. Goku was surprised to see a young man standing right before him, he had a black jacket on with a sword and he had purple hair, but he seemed to look kind of familiar in a way. The man would then explain his, who he was and bring Goku outside. He would explain that his name was Trunks, and they would then talk outside. Trunks explains about the time and about how time works and that he needs his help. Goku's in an odd timeline. Goku doesn't understand all this timeline mumbo jumbo stuff, but just for the clarification for Trunks, long story short, he needs his help. as there was a rift created in a time that made Goku's timeline currently, as Trunk kind of explains that there's a main timeline that follows, but every little different event causes a string to dip off from the main one, causing a different timeline with different scenarios. Trunks would then explain that you're one of them, but the one that broke off and where you're going down is the main source of the problem. 
He would then explain to Goku that because of this time rift, Trunks would then note on how this version of Goku has so much more power and potential than the main timeline Goku. And it was because of his version of Dr. Juro. This version of Dr. Juro in this What Ifs timeline was able to hack into the Capsule Corp notes and steal the early files on a time machine. He was able to use it and patch his plan to go through time itself to different versions of villains, time, Gokus, everything, and have his androids grow stronger and to collect and build data. Once when he builds this data, he would then use it to construct the ultimate creation, a being of untapped power and unprecedented evil. Pretty much, the goal is to collect and kill versions of Goku and collect power of other villains from timelines to make a version of Cell that we all know that is under Dr. Jiro's control. He can use it to overtake all the timelines and even the multiverse. This would surprise Goku hearing it, as Trunks would beg for his help, as Goku would ask why. If there's so many different versions of him, why doesn't he just find a really strong version of him? That does kind of get Goku kind of excited. There's different versions of himself. He would love to fight himself and go fight other strong versions. Trunks puts them back on the top. He says true, but he can't just pull Goku's from another timeline because then that'll make a whole other string of events. It'll change time too much. He kind of can basically bring Goku because his timeline is going to be destroyed. So they're able to pull that string and able to use him, but they can't use other versions of Goku. As if they do, that could cause a whole other set of problems that they can't have right now. Goku understands, but Goku would then accept as if Trunks needs his help and he trusts him as he can see in his heart that he is pure. He would then agree, shaking his hand. And they need to make haste as the androids are already attacking a timeline. As Trunks would then hold a scroll in his hand, Goku was then brought to a strange land and had a bunch of buildings and a large dragon in the sky. It, lo it looks like the at Shenron. He then looks around and he sees tons of different people, all different clothing, different armors, just chatting, buying things, looking around, tapping scouters. He was confused. He was in Kanton City. And these people, a lot of them looked like Frieza and Namekians. There's some pink people as well. He doesn't know who they are. And he can even see Saiyans and stuff as well and appears to be humans. Goku was actually really interested. And some of them seem really strong. A lot of these time patrollers would stop and stare at Goku as Goku's a legend amongst the time patrollers. He's the main character, of course. But Trunks would then tell him that they need to hurry up the stairs. They would then rush up the stairs, go through the portal, and meet the Supreme Kai of Time. Who was really thankful that Goku was here? Now, true, the fact that they pulled Goku from a timeline is really not allowed. But they didn't have a choice, and they could theoretically because his timeline's in jeopardy, and they could use help. So they did pull some thin lines. Now, Trunks would tell Goku that they need to move quick, as Dr. Jiro has already sent out his version of Android 17 and 18 to take the villain's powers. As they arrived just in time, Goku would then look around, confused. It was actually quite peaceful there, actually. But then he senses two strong power levels nearby. He would then turn and see a strange being. It was Frieza, or so he thought. That wasn't Frieza, that was Cooler. This Cooler is from the timeline from the movie where Cooler came to Earth to get his revenge and to see the so-called Super Saiyan. Goku would then see pretty much another version of himself knocked out on the ground. And he would be confused as he would yell out that you're Frieza, aren't you? Which Cooler would then laugh and state that no, he's not, he's not Frieza. You just, he already told him that. And the fact that he killed his brother and that he's now gonna get revenge for destroying the family legacy. Goku would then power up as the two would begin battling it back and forth. Goku would then kind of focus his mind off as he would then see that Trunks was also fighting somebody else. Trunks was fighting this weird man that had black hair and blue eyes. Trunks seemed to be struggling and he would tell Goku to hurry up and stop him quickly. That being said, Goku would then grab Cooler's tail and then throw him into the waterfall. Cooler would then step out and then smirk as he would state that, while his true, his brother was a bit more powerful than he was currently, he was able to unlock a new power that far surpasses anything else he's ever seen before. Cooler would begin to transform, growing massive, 
growing into his fifth form. Goku would be surprised. As the sudden power-up would quickly overpower base Goku, Goku would then burst into Kaioken as he was able to get Cooler off of him. He would then have no choice as he would transform into a Super Saiyan and battle Cooler, trading blows back and forth. Over a short time, he would soon overpower Cooler, being able to knock him down. As then, Trunks was knocked back into a rock wall. He was panting hard holding his sword as he was already injured. Android 17 would stand there, not truly phased. But then, out of nowhere, before he would kill Trunks, Goku would then appear and surprise attack him, landing a solid punch across his face, leaving a scratch on his face. Android 17 would then touch his cheek and be surprised. These versions of the androids, while true they have emotions, they're a bit less emotionless, and they're more evil. They're very similar to their future timeline selves. They're not like the more tame ones from the current. He would then grab Goku, and the two would begin their fight. Goku would be surprised as it's a little hard to sense him because he had infinite energy and he can't sense his energy at all. That's the problem. As he had infinite stamina, Goku was starting to lose power quickly. Android 17 was impressed by how powerful this version of Goku was, but it was not his mission to defeat him yet, as Dr. Jiro stated, but he wouldn't mind trying to take his energy. Goku would not let this happen, as Goku would be able to dodge his attacks just barely, as he would then wonder, was there another android? As then, from the shadows, Android 18 would then appear. Looking very similar to how she did before, they would then double tag team Goku, overpowering him very quickly. Trunks would then use this chance to try and get an early swing on them, but they would then grab his sword and hit him back with a key blast. Then, before they would grab Goku and drain his power, Dr. Jiro would state, no, I want to save this one and let him grow stronger so I can take his power. He would then tell both the androids to come back to base and give him the, da the data that he has. Both androids would, it would instantly fly through a portal. That being said, this is when Goku and Trunks would then get up and fly into the air. As Cooler was able to get up at this time, this is when the movie version of Goku, who was fighting Cooler originally, would get up holding the bird like before and transform into a Super Saiyan, and the timeline was brought back to normal as he would fight Cooler, like the original. That being said, they were brought back and they were healed by the Elder Kai. Now, true, could the Elder Kai unlock Goku's potential? He could, but we're not going to get into that just yet. We're going to save this for a later on time, as they don't have time for Goku to sit there for over 24 hours to do that, as they could attack any moment, and Elder Kai state, you can always come back next time. So that was a missed opportunity. After that being said, Trunks would then tell Goku that maybe if he can't unlock his potential in time, maybe he can go look at Spore Kanton City. There was, there was a lot of people that he could train with and maybe help. Now, Goku would then fly around, sparring with a few of the time patrollers, and true, some of them were very powerful. He was excited to fight other beings as well. He found out that some of them were Majins as well that had unique abilities. He would then arrive at the Namekian village as he would meet Elder Guru, or a different version. Elder Guru would then tell him that he's honored to see him and the fact that he needs his help. He needs him to go stop Frieza's men and Frieza from recovering the Dragon Balls, which Goku would then agree and go help him as he doesn't want nobody being hurt. He would then fly off and go recover the Dragon Balls and defeat the Frieza soldiers. That being said, Elder Guru would offer to unlock his potential, but Goku would state that he already had his potential unlocked by him before, which Elder Guru would state that, well, that is true. But at least you have our gratitude. If you ever need to use the Dragon Balls that we have, you can let us know. Goku would then explore around, seeing a bunch of different faces. He would even see a purple cat in the far off distance sleeping. Uh, he doesn't want to go near that guy, as he felt extreme pressure from that guy. He would then finally head back as Trunks would beg him to come back shortly afterwards. He would then see that, well, they're back at it again. The two androids are, and it was the perfect time to face them both. As they would then leave, they would then arrive as both 17 and 18 was there. At an odd wasteland-like planet, it definitely wasn't Earth for sure, but Trunks and Goku would then split up, as they would actually fight either android. Goku was fighting android 18, Trunks was fighting 17 to a stalemate, as it was kind of evenly matched. Goku was able to fight one of them on his own, as remember, Goku got a pretty big Zenkai, and not to mention too, he's been training for at least a few days, so he's been growing out more powerful too, fighting stronger beings as well. 
with Gohan's potential, even if he trained multiple times, a certain amount of times, even with Piccolo, he went from not being able to turn Mystic to being able to fight a blue, Super Saiyan Blue, which is absolutely insane. He's as strong as the plot needs him to be, which is what we're doing here. That being said, him battling Android 18 would be going back and forth, and he would actually try using Spirit Fission, bringing the attack back to her, hitting her, making a large explosion. Goku would then jump back as his outfit was halfway torn off anyway. He would then be panting heavily. Android 18 stood there with a little bit of anger as she had some damage on her and she was just fixing her hair irritated. But then Goku would then see a large man appear. He was a lot taller than he was, but he had purple spandex pants on and some green fur around his waist. And you can definitely tell that this guy is insanely strong. This being would then fly in, and he would then punch Android 18, knocking her through the rock pillars. As then, Trunks would then be away from Android 17, he would gas seeing who it was, and it was Broly. This was Broly before he met Goku and Vegeta in the Dragon Ball Super, so Paragus is alive, and this is before he met chi Lai in them. Broly was screaming angry. Trunks would then tell him to calm down, but Broly was not listening as the heat of the battle was increasing his anger. As Broly was losing control, he would then see an older man scruffling through his bags to find a remote control to stop him. Trunks would try and help him as Android 17 would try and attack them. He would then actually quit and go fight this large Saiyan, both of them together, as Broly was able to grab both of their necks and strangle them both at the same time. Goku was shocked seeing how powerful this Saiyan was. He's never seen something like this before. Is this another version of him? No, this can't be him. It must be another Saiyan somewhere. This is when Trunks would then tell Paragus to hurry up and use that thing to stop him. Paragus was trying to press the button, but it wasn't working. Broly was too powerful, as the shock was only irritating him more. Broly needs to be knocked down a little bit and winded, so his power level can drop enough so he can actually damage him with it and stop him. Trunks would try to do whatever he can to help him, as if they don't, Broly could just destroy and mess this timeline up completely. That being said, Broly was laughing like crazy, absolutely destroying both the androids in a sense, as they were stronger than him at first, but his power level was quickly rising, as remember, Broly's power keeps growing. Broly was starting to overpower them. But that being said, this was when Trunks would then try to fly in, as both of the androids would then leave at this point by Dr. Jiro's orders. Broly was still wild, and Trunks tells Goku that they have to stop him. Trunks would then fly in and swing his sword on Broly, but it would shatter right across his skin. Broly would then grab him by the throat and then throw him to the ground, and then he would kick Trunks, making him yell. Trunks was too weak to move, as Broly was then charging up a large mouth blast. This was when Goku flew in full force, and headbutted Broly, getting him away from Trunks as the blast would then shoot out into space. This is when Goku would then skid back from the attack, and he would then charge at Broly, and Broly would charge at him. Goku's Super Saiyan or would be blaring as he would be able to spin Broly using his own power against him and flip him into a mountainside as Goku was shocked with how powerful he was, and he was only growing stronger. This was when Broly would then charge towards Goku faster than before, Goku was able to read his movements as he was pretty easy to fight, but his speed and movements was only getting faster. He would be able to dodge some, but then it would be too fast, as Broly would then be able to throw a mountainous punch, hitting Goku right in the stomach, sending him into a mountainside. This was when Broly's yellow eyes would begin surging more as he then grows in size. This is when Broly was in full Akari state. He would then punch Goku over and over to the mountain, and Goku's attacks when he tried punching back barely even moved Broly. Goku would try using everything he has in his full power as he would fire a key blast at Broly. Broly would then grab the front of his shirt and deliver a powerful headbutt, shattering him almost inside. This would then rip his shirt off as he would then be launched back. This is when Broly would stomp on him, making him scream. He would then jump back and tell Trunks that he has spirit fission and Trunks and even Paragus would try offering some of his power, though it wasn't much, but it's something, would then offer their energy and go it would be in the sky. Goku would then secretly take Broly's energy, which Broly had so much rising that it didn't really matter, this would overcharge Goku's body. As Goku would then barely be able to contain this power within him, 
he would then fly right towards Broly. As Broly was floating in the air like he was when he first turned Super Saiyan, but he was an Akari, his green aura covering most of the planet, Goku would then fly in full force, breaking through the green aura, as he would, Broly would then open his arms to grab and attack Goku. Goku would then fly right towards him, extend his fist out, and scream Dragon Fist. And a large dragon would then hit Broly right in the stomach. As then, Broly and Goku would make a massive golden and green light. Goku would then fall and land hard on his back on the ground in Super Saiyan. But he would then drop in the base form, having no power left at all. Broly was under rubble, as then he would break out, screaming ready to fight again actually having a very small wound on his stomach. But he would then shrink back down as he calmed down, seeing his best friend. If you guys remember that giant green creature, uh, Ba, as he used to play by dodging his teeth, it would actually calm him down, and Broly would then shrink, as it was just the perfect moment for Paragus to then shock Broly, knocking him out. Paragus would actually thank them for stopping Broly, but then he would turn asking who they are, but they were already gone. Both Goku and Trunks would land in front of the Supreme Kai of Time, both gravely injured. As she was worried about them, she would quickly heal them. Goku was really, really content. Trunks would ask what was wrong. Goku says, oh, that fight was awesome. He didn't know there was a Saiyan like that. Does he have one like that in his timeline? Trunks would refuse saying, as he doesn't want to, of course, say that there's more. But Trunks would give him this. He says, yes, that person's name is Broly. And uh, most likely he is in your timeline. That makes Goku wants to go fight him again. That was so much fun. Trunks states that we almost died because he was only growing stronger. Goku states that I'll grow stronger too. After getting healed, it was already a massive Zenkai that both of them got. Now, that being said, there was a little bit of time of peace as Goku would still be exploring around Kanton City, seeing the other people and interacting with more. He would then state that, man, he definitely should find a ticket to try coming here more often as this will be awesome. There's so many people that he can fight so many missions he could go do this was incredible but of course trunks would reassure him that well this is only for a very short time then you're going back to your timeline which goku understands this now that being said this is when trunks would finally finally after so long he would be able to finally find the where the androids are with the help of the supreme kai and the elder kai as well they were able to lock dr jiro back in goku's timeline just enough for Goku and Trunks to finally confront all three of them and take them both down. That being said, they would then fly back to Goku's timeline, where his brother and the other Z fighters were actually fighting the androids, barely surviving. This is when Dr. Jiro would then stomp on Raditz's head and prepare to have them all taken, as he was going to take all their energy and well, pretty much just use them to course further his perfect creation. This is when Goku would then fly in, surprising Dr. Jiraiya in nowhere, as they didn't sense him, and punching him pretty much in half, only leaving his arms remaining. This is when both the androids would have little to no emotion, but they saw their target, Goku. This is when they would then fight Goku, but the death. As, since there was technically, they thought that Dr. Jiraiya died, which he didn't, he was able to crawl away and escape. As he didn't have legs this time, he was still able to float around. That being said, Dr. Jiro would then fly off to go activate his creation. As it is true, it's a little bit too early. He wish he could do more, but it's not enough time. He has to do it now. That being said, Goku was actually fighting both androids by himself in Super Saiyan, which was surprising considering the fact that Goku got a big Zenkai and he's angry seeing that his friends were hurt, only increasing his power. He would then grab Android 17's hand. His anger was seething, making him stronger he would then overpower both of them. By this point, Dr. Jiro was able to make it to his lab and activate its perfect creation. Now with his creation free, it would then fly out, as back to Goku and the androids. Goku would then tell him that they're not going to leave here alive. He would then grab Android 18 and block her in the way, as 17 fired a key blast, which would then hit her, injuring her badly, knocking her down. This, as when Goku and Android 17 were about to duke it out again, they would then stop as Goku sensed something looking up. It was a creature of something. This creature was Cell. He was very similar to Cell's look. Maybe a little bit of a difference is, but considering the fact that he has more power and more DNA from other villains. 
he looked more reddish in color, aka he looked a little bit more, imagine what first form Cell Max would look like. That's kind of what he looks like, with some green added to him. Cell was very delighted, as he would thank Goku for finding the androids, bringing them right to him, as now that he can absorb both the androids and become the strongest being, as he knows Dr. Jero's main plan, and he wants the same thing. He wants to become the most powerful being in all the multiverse, and he knows exactly how to do it. Because Dr. Jero has been spying on them the whole time, but we'll get to that very shortly. That being said, Goku's not just going to let them absorb the androids. He would then tell the androids to just get out of here quickly. He can't, we can't let them absorb you. It was too late, though, as Cell would then use the solar flare, blinding everybody. As they were not expecting him to have this attack, he would be able to absorb Android 17 and 18, turning into Perfect Cell. So, this looks pretty much like Cell Max, but in a perfect form. As then he would smirk looking at his hand, having a black and green aura. He stood there happy, as he was finally perfect, but not perfect yet. Goku readied himself, as he would fly into attack Cell, Cell would easily grab his fist, and he would smirk. He was playing with Goku, easily knocking him around. Goku would try using every trick in the book that he has, but it wasn't affecting Cell at all. Even a point-blank full-power Kamehameha wave didn't even scratch this version of Cell. As then Goku had no energy left, Cell would then gut punch him, sending him to the ground. Cell would actually let him live, as he would he kill him, true, but maybe he can become more powerful and maybe give him the motivation to grow stronger again to fight him again. That Cell's thing is that he just wants to fight. He's very similar to his original Cell. Now, Cell would be able to open a portal, leading to Kanton City. Dr. Juro had a bot follow Goku, spying on him the entire time. It was when the androids was able to fight Goku, a little bot stuck onto Goku when the androids fought him, and it traveled across with Trunks, finding these different beings, and this same bot, getting off of Goku, would then fly around, fighting the, finding the Universal Tree. This was Dr. Jiro's plan, as he knows that there's limitless amount of power in that tree, it can make his creation limitless in power that he can rule, that the Red Ribbon Army can rule over all of the different multiverse. That being said, that was Cell's goal, to achieve ultimate power, and then he can become the strongest, as that's his main goal. That is his goal that Dr. Jiro planted in him to make him truly perfect. Cell believes that he's not fully perfect yet. With Goku badly injured, they would be able to get Goku back up. Now, Cell was reigning terror, as he was easily defeating any time patroller that was in his way. Goku was found by the Supreme Kai, as she was extremely worried. As then, they're running out of time, they need to get Goku back up. As then, she would then heal him, and pretty much, long story short, Cell was looking for the Universal Tree, so he can use that to fight and take all the 12 universes' energy, and to become the strongest being in the entire multiverse. As then now when Goku was finally healed, he would then fly up seeing Goku battling tons of different versions of Goku's. Cell being there, destroying the time buildings and more, was causing time rifts to open. Different versions of Goku's and villains were all coming out, fighting each other like it was a battle royale. Cell was easily defeating everyone in his way. Cell grabbed a man version of Goku that was a Super Saiyan 4. He battled one that was a Super Saiyan Blue, even one that was Ultra Instinct, being able to fight these beings. Goku was seeing the World Tree, would then fly towards it, as maybe with Spirit Fission, he might be able just to absorb the power and use it to defeat Cell, using fire to take out fire. As if Cell can do it, Goku can do it. He would then get near the roots of the tree, as the Supreme Kai told him to not do it that if he takes it, he'll die. The power is omnipotent. It's all 12 universes together. It's going to kill him. Goku does not have a choice. He would then grab the roots of the tree, and the tree would give Goku all the power of the entire multiverse. All the 12 universes would then go into Goku. Goku would then see everything turn black. He would then open his eyes as he was in an empty black void. He would then look around and be confused. He would then turn, seeing his father. It was Bardock. Bardock was standing there, and he was smirking at him, telling him that the fight's not done yet, and that I need you to get back up, and that 
this cell or whatever he is cannot stop you. As you can do anything you can, son. He puts his hand on Goku's shoulder and tells him to not give up and keep fighting. As then Goku would then snap back in reality, he would then open his eyes as he was floating above everybody. Cell would then turn in shock, dropping the time patrol. Goku was standing there in a bright golden light, flickering as this was Super Saiyan Goku with the Universal Tree absorbed. Goku absorbed all the power, similar to Dragon Ball Heroes when he absorbed the Universal Tree. Imagine that blue form, but it was golden like Super Saiyan. Cell would then growl in anger as he took his power from him. He's just going to take it back. Cell would then fly right in full force to hit Goku. Goku would easily catch the attack and deliver a weak gut punch to Cell. This would then make Cell spit out blood everywhere as Goku would then charge his fist up and hit Cell again, so much force that it would blast his arm off. Cell would then quickly regenerate, as he would then power up to his maximum power. Flying in, both of them would begin trading blows back and forth, but this was nothing to this version of Goku. As Goku knows that he needs to kill Cell right then and now, as he doesn't know how long he can control this power for before it completely obliterates him, and he needs to give it back to the World Tree. Goku would then charge up a full power Kamehameha, firing it right at Cell. As Cell would then fire his own Kamehameha wave, both would then clash. Cell was using every ounce of power that he had, but he was losing ground. Goku would then glare at Cell, and he would then double the size of the attack, screaming, as it would hit Cell full force, vaporizing the perfect bio android. With Cell completely destroyed, Goku was quickly about to implode, having all this power. He would put his hands on the root of the tree, and all of the power would then go right back to the tree as it would spring back to life. As this nearly killed Goku, destroying his body, in a sense, with the help of Supreme Kai, she would be able to heal him just in time before he died, as then, peace was finally restored to all timelines. Goku, though, he was really, really, really hyped up, as maybe he can achieve a power like that on his own one day. That being said, the different versions of Goku actually met him. And he wonders what all these different forms were. He wants to get that too. And they would say that you'll get there one day. You're just a different version of us. And Goku wishes he could fight the other versions of him, but they all had to go back. And since the rift was fixed, all of the different versions of Goku were all going back to their other timelines. Once when that's the case, they would then bring Goku back to the portal, back to his allies who were back to full health at this point but they were still on the battlefield. All of them would then hug Goku, happy that he was alive and that Cell was destroyed. Raditz was proud of his brother, as then, he would then get up seeing Trunk standing there. He would then shake the young man's hand. He then thanks Trunks, Trunks for everything, but Trunks thanks him even more, stating that they owe him a true debt, and that if he ever, you know, things ever turn sour or if anything ever happens, they might call him again for help. He would make a perfect time patroller, as Trunks does have a gift, since he can't really give him anything, Trunks has a gift for him anyway. He would then explain that he could still get the heart virus and explain shortly what it is to his friends, which worried him, but Trunks says no. Should it ever affect him, he offered the medicine to Goku to cure it, which would then in turn save his life. Goku would then thank him, and he would then tell Trunks again, truly, if he ever needs any help, he's there to help out, as long as he gets to come back and maybe they can have a little one-on-one -on -one again. Trunks would then smirk and nod, thanking him, as he would then leave, holding the scroll. Peace was finally restored. Now, since these were the androids in the Cell Max-looking character from Goku's timeline, the android saga finally ended, and the Cell Saga ended. This means a lot of changes. Gohan never had Super Saiyan 2, Gohan never got Super Saiyan, Vegeta having Super Saiyan is something we haven't touched on yet, but you'll see that sh a little bit later in the next What If. And that being said, that Goku never died. So, he never went to the other world. Now, as seven years would then pass, the Boo arc will soon begin. After Goku was able to defeat Perfected Cell Max, peace was finally restored. Now, remember, Goku never died in this what if scenario like the original. So, he never went to other world where he did learn the fusion dance and he also learned Super Saiyan 3. Because the only way for him to activate Super Saiyan 3 is if he trained having pretty much infinite life energy and stamina. So that's the only reason why he was able to unlock it. But this version of Goku's after something different. 
as he saw the different versions of himself and he noticed that they all had different forms. One was red and had red fur on him. Another one was in like a blue form, looked like blue Super Saiyan. He wants to get that for himself, but he knows he can. As if the other guys can do it, he for sure can, but he has nowhere to start. But first things first, he's going to continue training. This also means that with Gohan around too, Goku would be training with Gohan, further increasing his potential even higher. Because Gohan's potential, we can say, is around the same. Because if Gohan has double the potential, holy moly, he would be too broken. With Goku training with Gohan, what about Vegeta? Now, Vegeta's been a sore topic, hasn't he? During the entire What If, he's kind of been taking L's left and right, not getting any love and appreciation. Well, Vegeta during these seven years has taken training to a completely different level. Vegeta has actually followed the path that Goku has. What does that mean? Well, Vegeta throughout his entire life, he's never really had any masters or he kind of fought for survival. He does mainly do the gravity training like before. And by this point, he did get with Bulma, but it was a bit later and Trunks was still born. Raditz by this point would have probably gotten with Launch or with somebody else. But he was still training with his brother as well. Raditz has gotten very strong in his own right. But as for Vegeta, he went back to basics. Vegeta was able to learn from masters like Master Roshi, Korin, Popo, and more. Vegeta was able to kind of push himself more than he ever has as he's training smart instead of stupid. He would only train strength and with pride and not train smart like Goku always does. With Vegeta's natural talent, He's not even close to the level of Goku is, but Vegeta's actually a lot stronger than he was and as his original Buu Saga self. He also does know Super Saiyan 1 and Super Saiyan 2, as it's been over 7 years. With this being said, Goku, I feel like during the 7 years, the events will go the same. But Vegeta would not have any hate towards Goku, because even though he knows that he was able to catch up a lot, he's nowhere near the strength that Goku's at right now. Goku's on a completely different level. Because now that Goku has this high motivation, he's only been more excited than ever. So Goku's been training harder than ever, which, by the way, is extremely busted. With seven years of training straight, Goku is insanely powerful. With this being said, once when the Supreme Kai would still appear, everyone would still be at the World Tournament. He would then explain who Majin Buu is and how dangerous he is, like all the events before. Now, the only difference here is that once when Gohan was with Fidel and he saw that she was getting hurt, once when Gohan goes to fight Kibito, he would kind of power up. Now, in this time around, Gohan would go Super Saiyan 1 into Super Saiyan 2, but his power level is so much higher than it's ever been. This version of Gohan is far stronger than even what Majin Buu is. It's not even a competition anymore. Because remember, he hasn't been slacking off for seven years. He's been training with his father and his brother. Though he's still very intelligent, of course, as he still had to do school for the other half of time because of Chi-Chi. Goku was smiling as he was proud of how powerful the sun was. Now, I still feel like Swopovich and Yamu would still be able to steal his energy. Supreme Kai would keep him pinned down. And then they would then follow Swopovich and Yamu going over to Babidi's ship so they can find out where it is and destroy Boo before he could even be revived. Goku actually kind of wants to fight this Boo creature, as he doesn't know what it is, but he's kind of interested. But he recognizes that they're called Majins, and they have the same logo on their head. Is it maybe like those pink people that he saw before in the Kanton City? Is that making sense? He was processing all this through his head, as once when they arrive at Babidi's ship, they would have easily handled Pipui, and Yakon would have been defeated. Now with Deborah, the fight would have gone a lot more differently. Uh, even if Gohan, Vegeta, or Goku fought Deborah, it would have been almost a one-shot pretty much instantly. Deborah would have had no chance against any versions of these characters. Babidi was terrified, but because they absorbed some of Gohan's power, that was more than enough to revive Majin Buu. Once when Majin Buu was revived, Goku would recognize that he looks very similar to the Majins that he saw in Kanton City before, as he explored there for a few days. He tries to actually befriend him, as he senses that he's more of like a naughty child. He doesn't really know any better. He doesn't really sense any true evil from this creature. Now, Goku would actually step up, but Vegeta would then cut him off, and state that no, he's mine. 
Goku would tell him to not kill Majin Buu because he's not evil. Vegeta would state that I'll do whatever I please, you stay out of my way. Because Vegeta wants to let out some frustration. Now, Babidi would actually try to take over his mind, but this would be during halfway through the fight. As at the start of the fight, Vegeta would have bursted into Super Saiyan, and he would have flew right in, attacking Majin Buu. Now, even Vegeta as a Super Saiyan was already stronger than he was as Majin Vegeta, as he was giving Buu a run for his money. Vegeta would then burst into Super Saiyan 2, which would surprise some people, as he was able to easily handle Majin Buu, overpowering him pretty much pretty well. But with that being said, Majin Buu couldn't repair any damage done to him, so Vegeta was trying to get irritated. He was going to hit him with the final flash, killing Majin Buu. Until Babidi would then hit him with his magic, causing Vegeta to fall over in pain, as he was trying to take over Vegeta's mind, and he was trying to give him power to kill Goku. With this being said, Vegeta would actually reject the Majin control, as he knows that even if he powers up, he will not be able to defeat Goku on his own. He knows this, as he sensed how powerful he was. It's not even a competition, and he's accepted that. So Vegeta would reject it, and he would be furious, as Supreme Kai by this point would have already caught up, and he would have actually been able to kill Babidi, thus freeing Majin Buu, and Goku would kind of work out a deal with him. With Majin Buu now freed, they didn't kill anybody, Vegeta never blew himself up, Goku never showed Super Saiyan 3, there's no Gotenks, no Ultimate Gohan slash Mystic Gohan, no nothing. But now Goku would actually speak with the Supreme Kai and tell him that, yeah, I've seen them before. As Supreme Kai was confused, this is, how did he know that about Majin Buu? As did he ever meet him before? But Goku would then explain that, no, I've actually went up to Kanton City in the time, Supreme Kai of Time, and I was able to train with them and fight the super strong Stell Max guy, which would surprise the Supreme Kai, as he was kind of interested. And he says, did you meet Elder Kai as well? And Goku said, yeah, I met him too. So with this being said, Supreme Kai would offer to actually train Goku and Gohan, and even Vegeta if he wanted. Now, by the way, whereas Raditz, Raditz was there as well, but he was kind of like the behind character, as there was nothing that he could have really done anyway. Raditz is stronger than Vegeta, but they're kind of, eh, pretty much dead, even like a Goku and Vegeta rivals. But Raditz was kind of in the background, keeping quiet. Raditz would even be offered to join as well, and they're not going to turn down free training. So... But the problem is, is that there needs to be somebody strong here in case Majin Buu turns bad. Well, I feel like Raditz would actually take the cake on that one and he'll stay. I'll stay here and watch this creature. If he ever does act out, I'll let you know. With the fact that Goku, Gohan, and Vegeta would then go off to train with the Supreme Kai, the Supreme Kai would then offer the Z-Sword, as Goku was easily able to remove the Z-Sword, and they would both be sparring with it, but he would actually give it to Vegeta for Vegeta to use, since remember, Vegeta's the weakest one here. Under the training of the Z-Sword and the Supreme Kai's, Vegeta did grow much more powerful. Now, alongside with Gohan and Goku, they all got strong. This is when they still had the catching scene to where they threw the strongest metal in the universe and Vegeta would try to cut it. It would basically shatter the Z-Sword, thus freeing Elder Kai. Elder Kai was perplexed and wondering where he is and he was last remembered going up against a purple cat, but that's a different story. He would then see that there's three Saiyans here. After some little back and forth, he would examine how powerful each of them are, and he would actually offer to unlock all of their potentials for freeing him, which all of them eagerly accepted, especially Vegeta, but Vegeta wants to step up first. With Vegeta now sitting there, kind of being a little bit impatient as Elder Kai begins dancing and, you know, kind of meditating around him for the next couple hours, this is when I believe that Boo would still befriend Hercule the same as before, and still befriend B the dog. This is when Hercule was still shot, Majin Boo would still lose his mind, and Evil Boo was born. This is when the two Majins would then battle it out as Raditz arrived, thus seeing Super Boo. And Super Boo was furious. As remember, the last time he remembers them, they humiliated him and his mind. He did still make sure that Mr. Satan was still kept alive as he didn't hurt him because of the good boo within him, but he would begin his fight with Raditz, and Raditz would then burst into Super Saiyan 2, but with that being said, he's around Fat Boo's level, so he wasn't able to do much against his version of Super Boo, and Super Boo would end up absorbing Raditz, thus making him way stronger. 
during this time, Vegeta would be able to get his potential unlocked because back with Piccolo, Lu would then appear at Kami's lookout and speak to Piccolo and the others and explain that he'll destroy everyone on the planet. He, need, he wants to meet somebody strong. Well, with the help of the Z fighters making him basically kind of agree that, well, if you wait for at least another day, then we can get somebody super strong for you, which Boo would begin waiting until he would start turning everybody into chocolate and eating everybody as a payment for being irritated. Once when they see this go on, Vegeta's potential was finally unlocked as he was now Mystic Vegeta. As he would try turning into one of those Super Saiyans, as Elder Kai would state, Vegeta would be exponentially more powerful. Remember, he is far stronger than Mystic Gohan ever was in this split if, so Vegeta would then smirk as he was ready to go kill this creature. Vegeta would then ask to have his clothes changed back to his regular Saiyan armor, or you can go with the normal tank top. He would then fly off and go fight Majin Buu. Now with Super Buu, Gohan's potential would then be next up. As Gohan would be sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting, of course, like before, Goku knows that he needs to go make sure that Vegeta can handle his own. As Vegeta would begin his epic battle with Super Buu, he would give Super Buu the Mystic Gohan treatment, pretty much owning him the entire fight where Vegeta finally gets his limelight after so long, as Majin Buu has no chance against this version of Vegeta. With Mystic, he is far too powerful. But then Buu has a trick up his sleeve, as he knows that Vegeta is missing the point, as he was distracting Vegeta and waiting as then time would then pass. Just remember, the Kai world's a little bit different than the normal world time, so it's a bit weird. But let's just say, long story short, that Gohan was able to get his potential unlocked as well, and he would go join in the fight. Now, this is what Boo has been waiting for. Boo would then absorb both Gohan and Vegeta, tricking both of them, which would shock Goku. Now, why did Boo not try to absorb Goku? It's because Goku was too far away. He was watching. But with Gohan and Vegeta both being absorbed, Boo is way more powerful. He is far more powerful than Buhan ever was, as he was now the ultimate being in the universe. He would then challenge Goku to a fight, telling him that he's been waiting to battle. Goku would then smirk as he would then agree to this challenge. As he would then begin powering up, he would then burst into Super Saiyan, which would shock Boo at how powerful he was and even in the Super Saiyan 2. Until Goku has a little trump card up his sleeve, and he wants to show this to Boo for a reason. Goku's been saving something for a very long time, as Goku would then be able to transform into a Super Saiyan 3. I know I said earlier that Goku wouldn't be able to unlock it, because, well, he hasn't been dead for seven years. But I wanted to keep it as a fun surprise because the fact that Goku has Gohan's potential and how smart he trains for seven years, I definitely think that he could unlock Super Saiyan 3. Remember how broken he is currently. And I wanted to give him a Super Saiyan 3 to have a new form. Goku would shock Boo at this form, as Goku states that he apologized for taking so long. He doesn't have much practice with this one. He called it a Super Saiyan 3. Goku would then fly in and battle with Boo as Goku was way stronger than this version of Boo as well, giving him almost the Vegito treatment, but he was still far ahead. But he knows that he needs to be absorbed like before, because he knows that he can go inside and then take out all of his friends and his family and save them. So after making Boo lose his mind, giving him the Vegito treatment, Boo would then absorb him, just like before, but Goku would then use a key barrier to protect himself from being absorbed. After exploring through his body, Goku being Super Saiyan 2 to conserve energy, he would then find his friends, and he would start freeing them, weakening Boo one by one. He would battle Boo within his own body, but remember this is normal Super Boo now, as he pretty much removed everybody, and he would easily be able to kick around Boo no problem, until he sees Fat Boo, and he would then grab onto it as Boo would then beg him, don't do it, don't grab it, please, I won't be me anymore. Goku would then rip it right off, then turning Boo, and he would begin to start changing. Goku would somehow be able to grabbing all of his friends. He would finally escape, dropping them all down as they were unconscious, but they were okay. Boo was screaming in agony as he begins bulking up, growing massive. 
but then he shrinks back down, as now Boo has become Kid Boo. Goku was excited to fight this version of Boo, as Kid Boo wasted no time. Super Saiyan 2 Goku and Kid Boo begin their battle. But now remember, Goku would only need Super Saiyan to even beat this version of Boo. As a matter of fact, base Goku could probably kill Kid Boo. Remember how powerful this version of Goku is. Boo has no chance, as Goku senses that he's even weaker than before. This will be no problem, but I have to finish him now, before he tries to destroy the planet. Goku would then charge up a full power command Mayo Wave, and just for extra good measure, he would burst into Super Saiyan 3, hitting Kid Buu full force, vaporizing him from the existence. With that being said, Kid Buu was easily defeated, as Goku would then be next to his friends, as they would all recover and thank him for helping them. As now, the Elder Kai would actually offer Goku to unlock his potential. Goku would actually decline it. I know. Why would he decline getting more power? Goku would state that while it's true, but he has a new form that he wants to work on. And he knows that there's something more than that. And also, he just doesn't want to be given power like that. That's just how Goku's character is. He doesn't like to be given power. He wants to earn it on his own. Which, even though everyone thinks that he should, they can't really tell Goku no, and they, un they respect his choice. This only makes Vegeta smirk, as now he knows that now he has a way to catch up to him now with his potential being unlocked which only makes Goku more excited as he bets Vegeta to try and catch up to him. Now, after a few years of more peace, Goku would be training back on home as before, as Bulma's 38th birthday party was happening. This is when Lord Beerus would still show up, and I feel like he would meet Son Goku first on the ship. Now, this is when I believe all the Z Fighters are a lot more stronger, especially Raditz, Gohan, Goku, and Vegeta. Raditz would be able to make his trip up to Elder Kai, as promised, as he would be able to have his potential unlocked too. So now you have Gohan, Vegeta, and Raditz all having Mystic Form. I feel like all of them would have their turn battling Beerus, and Beerus was impressed with how strong all of them were, but it was nothing compared to him. This is when Goku would then step up and turn Super Saiyan 3, making Beerus smirk in excitement, as he's far stronger than the others. And this form is interesting, but it's not a god. He can see so much more potential in Goku, but it's not a god form. Goku would battle Beerus, and Beerus would then prove a point by powering up way more and defeating him within a few punches. He would then tell everybody that you need to turn him into a Super Saiyan god, or else I will destroy this entire planet. They would still use the dragon to ask what Super Saiyan god and then, this is when I believe that Goku might think, hey, maybe I can turn into that blue god form that one version he was talking about. As he was getting excited. After being given all the energy of his friends, Goku would finally transform into a Saiyan god, or the Super Saiyan god. Goku was way more powerful than he ever was before. In terms of power scaling, He's far stronger than he was way after the Goku Black Saga. He's stronger as a Super Saiyan God than he was in the Tournament of Power. To show you how strong this power pushed him. With his potential and his hidden power, it goes to show you. This version of Goku would battle Beerus as they were trading blows back and forth, shaking the entire universe. Beerus was having the time of his life. As this version of Goku so much more stronger. This version of Goku was thousands upon hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of times stronger than he originally was, giving Beerus the fight that he always wanted. Lord Beerus was having a blast, fighting Goku, trading blows back and forth, but then Goku's form begins to flicker, as he would then lose the god form, but he would keep the essence and some of the power. Being in Super Saiyan 3, he would continue battling Beerus, giving him everything that he has, landing some solid hits on Beerus, but not leaving any damage, of course. As we all know that the comic version of Beerus, the manga version, is way stronger than he is in the anime version. This would make Beerus and summon a massive Hakai Ball and throw it right at Goku, who would then catch it and with all of his strength, he would be able to destroy it, blocking it right back towards Beerus, as then Goku was defeated. He used everything he had and he admitted that he lost. But Goku was happy that he lost, Beerus wonders why. Goku would explain that throughout his whole life, he's grown so strong that anyone that he really ever fought could never really challenge him, honestly, ever since this last guy and mainly you, but he's pretty much won every single fight that he ever went up against. 
but he hasn't fought somebody so strong in that so long and he's honestly honored that someone was as strong as you even with this new power up i had no chance against it beerus would then commend goku and tell him that he's the strongest that he's ever fought and he tells him to keep on training he would even offer goku the god of destruction rule at least would and this would make beerus of course yell at him but goku doesn't want it as goku never sees himself as a, as a destroyer anyway now the only person that might be interested in that role is maybe Raditz or Vegeta, but now nah, they have lives of their own and families of their own. Why would they care about it right now? Beerus would even offer Goku to come train on his planet, as he's a worthy rival. This is when I believe that Goku would agree, unless maybe Vegeta could come along, Raditz maybe could. Beerus would state, well, Prince Vegeta might be able to come, but these other ones, no. I'm not going to have my whole land covered with a bunch of mortals. You can only bring one person. Goku would actually bring Vegeta, which would surprise everybody, but Goku states that, well, Vegeta really pushes me, and it's what Vegeta wanted. It's also Vegeta. He wants Vegeta to come with him. Vegeta would then smirk as he will finally be able to surpass Raditz and finally get back up on the strongest totem pole again. As Vegeta's finally getting the love and respect that he deserves, all of them would actually leave with Beerus going over to his planet. And Goku would also explain that while Raditz and Gohan are so strong, to never, to never, ever, ever quit training, continue growing stronger on planet Earth, and to make sure to protect it if I'm not around. Which Raditz would understand and he would respect his brother's decision, as they've grown a lot as brothers, being very close. Gohan as his son would understand, especially since he found out that Videl's pregnant, he's not leaving either, as why would he? And Raditz doesn't want to leave his family and kids either. With this being said, Goku and Vegeta would go train under Beerus' planet, learning God Key. But with Go Goku's potential, he would be able to outclass Vegeta again. Even though Vegeta is actually training a lot more smart, as he's training more like Goku does, as he learns and he's adapting, compared to the other version of Vegeta, he's still not able to keep up. Though he is much more powerful than he originally was, by far. Him and Vegeta are way strong, especially Goku. Whis is interested in saying how gifted Goku actually was, and that very quickly, both of them would be able to learn how to control their God Key, learn how to control Super Saiyan God, and even use Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. Now, with Vegeta actually training smart over the next few years, as we know, Vegeta would be able to unlock a new form, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Vegeta knows that Kakarot no matter what he does, he can never catch up. Now, Vegeta does like the mystic form that he has, as maybe he's able to do something with that. That's where the new form comes from, but we'll get into that a little bit later. As for Goku, he's actually very interested in Whis's ability. Ultra Instinct. He's very interested in it. Remember, Goku here saw many different versions of Goku, and he told Whis about it, and Whis was surprised, and he would explain that, well, there was one version of him that had this, like, silver hair, and he was able to dodge every attack like nothing. Like, you know, he wasn't even looking at some of the attacks. Luis would be interested and wonder if he was using Ultra Instinct, which he wonders that if Goku can do it, then this version can too. Luis would begin training Goku in the art of Ultra Instinct very slowly. As for Vegeta... He sees that he's following Ultra Instinct training, as he would actually try himself, but he just couldn't get it, as it's just his mindset is not followed in it. Beerus would actually look at Vegeta and offer him to train a bit differently, like a destroyer, which does fit Vegeta's style a lot more. Vegeta would then follow on and go on his own training with Beerus, as he'll get stronger his own way. With Goku training with Whis, the first training would be Goku to start using his senses and his body to move on its own. As we states that no mortal has ever been able to do it, but if what you say is true, that a version of yourself was able to do that, then that means that you for sure can. Maybe you're naturally gifted in this. Whis would then put a blindfold around Goku as he couldn't see. To think. To not even think. To just move. Make your body move without reacting. Just react on its own. Now, with a lot of hurdles, Goku was actually starting to get the hang of it a little bit, as he was actually dodging some of Whis's attacks with his body moving on its own. Now, of course, this is not even touching the fact that he's even in Ultra Instinct. He's starting to train his senses to move on their own and to not think about it. 
as this was months and months and months of grueling training, but Goku was starting to learn how to fight with the blindfold on. Dodging Whis's attacks and able to throw some of his own, which was making Whis very, very excited. Now the same events would then happen as Frieza was still revived. Now with Frieza still revived, he would still train for the next three to four months, growing much more powerful. He would still come to Earth. This time around, Goku and Vegeta would not actually leave. As well, what about Raditz and Gohan? Are they sure they're able to fight Frieza? Well, actually they can, as hear me out. Goku knows that his son has to fight his own battles, and he trusts his son. But if Gohan ever needs it, he can help him, as Whis was ready to leave if they ever needed to. With Raditz and Gohan teaming up, remember they've been training for the past few years too, even more intensely than ever, thus making Gohan much stronger. As this version of Gohan, even with slight training, he was able to catch up to Super Saiyan Blue. So why can't this version of Gohan do the same thing? This version of Gohan, I would say he's probably around Super Saiyan God level, fighting Golden Frieza, Gohan would still start to lose. Until, after being defeated a few times with the help of Raditz and the other Z fighters, giving their energy to Gohan, buffing his power up even more, Gohan would be able to kill Frieza, delivering a full power Masenko attack, killing him. So Gohan was the hero of the planet, and this only motivates Gohan even more, to train harder than ever, to only grow stronger, and to overcome any obstacle that's in his way, so he can protect Earth when his father or the others are not around. Now Gohan of course does have a full-time job still, but he does fit training in there either way. And you also have to remember too that Mr. Satan's is the richest man on the planet, as I feel like he could give Adele and Gohan as much money as they want, and they can live comfortably, which I think Gohan probably would do so he can train more with Piccolo and Raditz, now as for Piccolo, Piccolo is still there and he's still training the same as before. Now with this version of Piccolo, as we know he has dealt down a lot, he has been able to train a lot more with the stronger foes making him a lot more powerful. We'll get into Piccolo a little bit later. As now, since the Frieza saga ended, peace would finally be restored to planet Earth until the Universe 6 arc would happen. Champa would still meet Beerus the same as before, the fight would still be set up. The only difference here is that there's not really a point. Since Champa knows how powerful Goku and Vegeta are and them, he would still be cocky and challenge him, which Beerus knows he's going to win. Goku can solo the entire thing. And if not, even if Goku had his guard drop, I don't think that would happen. Because once when he was fighting Frost, Goku would not drop his guard like before. He's been trained by Whis. Just for this moment, in case anything happens, he would dodge Frost's attack, sensing that something was wrong, using a very, very, very watered-down version of Ultra Instinct, able to dodge it. As he was able to grab Frost's hand and notice the needle. And the other thing too, Jacko would notice it too. So Frost was still eliminated, and even if Goku fought Hit, Hit has zero chance of touching this version of Goku. Even with time skip, Goku would give Hit the Jiren treatment. Hit would even try to use some of his deadly abilities, but it wouldn't even work. Jiren was far too powerful for Hit, and guess what? This version of Goku is far too powerful for Hit. Giving him the Jiren treatment, Hit would be knocked out of the ring. And there's no Monaka like before, because he's too overpowered anyway. So Goku would actually win the entire thing by himself, relatively. He even offered Vegeta if he wanted to switch, but Vegeta didn't even think they're worth his time. The only one that was, was Kaba, which I feel like during that fight, by the way, Goku would switch with Vegeta to go fight Kaba. Vegeta would still give him the same treatment, make him turn Super Saiyan, fight him for a little bit, defeat him in Super Saiyan Blue, or even, or even Super Saiyan God, or whatever. And then he would back out, and then he would let Goku go fight Hit. And even if Vegeta fought Hit, he would still give him the same treatment that Goku did. It doesn't matter either way. He might have been hit a few times, but he would adapt quickly and defeated Hit. Hit has no chance against these versions of these characters, so Choppa would have lost miserably. Beerus would still use the Super Dragon Balls to still wish back his planet Earth, just as he promised. Now, with this being said, in the distant future, or futures, in Kanton City, Future Trunks, or Zeno Trunks, saw that the scroll for this Goku's timeline was turning purple again, as somebody was messing with time 
once again, and he knows that he needs Goku's help. Son Goku was enjoying peace on Earth until Trunks, Zeno Trunks, or Future Trunks, would return looking for his help. For which Goku would explain what's going on as Trunks would then lead him back to Kanton City. But the place was dead empty, deserted it looked. Now Goku asked, why is, what's, what's going on? Trunks would then explain that all the time patrollers are actually out on duty right now to try and keep all the timelines kept together. As they would finally reach the main time building with the Spring Kai time and Elder Kai, Trunks would show Goku as all the hundreds of thousands of scrolls are all glowing purple. Somebody, he would state, by the name of Goku Black, has been able to travel around different timelines, stealing power and growing in strength, as he was able to grow a team of his own, of evil versions of other characters. And now he's more dangerous than he's ever been. Trunks would then explain, explain that this is a Masu, a Kai, who would turn evil and use the Super Dragon Balls to switch bodies with him, thus using his own power to cause harm and destruction. Zamasu was able to switch bodies with Son Goku, but his power was locked within. Now Zamasu, he needed to learn how to use this new potential. With Goku Black, he would now have the time ring he stole, he will use it to travel to other timelines and fight other versions of Son Goku. And others so he can grow stronger. He laughed as he clutched his fist. He would travel through time to a random location on Earth in a random timeline. This is his first little trial run, he's very interested to see what's going to happen. As he was very confident in himself, saying that Son Goku's the strongest around. He would then sense a powerful energy, but this planet was... No human interaction, there was no mortals around. All of the cities were barren wastelands, it was just... Been like they'd been there for decades with no humans. Until... He would then find... Son Gohan. Who was a full adult an aged older man. This timeline is what if Majin Buu won, defeating Goku and the others. Gohan was able to beat the Majin, making him the last on Earth. Having no Dragon Balls, Gohan had Piccolo's torn cape and almost like a hood. He was a lot older looking, as the cities had moss and vines on them being decades old. Gohan was surprised. Was his father alive? But how? There's no way, but he, his key doesn't feel right. He would ask if, if that was his father, but Goku Black would sarcastically respond, saying, Yes, it is me, son, but now I'm going to use you to grow stronger. I'm going to kill all of you. Gohan would then frown, as that's not his father. There's no way. He must be a fake or something, but he will stop him. Goku Black would then fly in, as Goku and Gohan were both trading blows back and forth. Gohan would actually remove his cloak, and he would then transform into a Super Saiyan 2. Goku Black was amazed by the power. It was great. It was divine almost to him, but it was nothing to him. Gohan would then fly in trading blows with Goku Black as he was quickly growing stronger, now seemingly equal. Gohan would be able to deliver a massive blow to his face, sending him back. As Gohan would start to power up more, he would give combos of attacks to Goku, as then... He would then hold his chest. Goku Black began smirking. As he was holding his chest, this pain, it was making him stronger. It was making him more powerful. He understands that this is how he can unlock his true potential. He would then smirk as Gohan would then fly in and throw a powerful punch, which Goku Black would be able to catch it. He would then look at Gohan smirking, telling him, I wish to thank you, mortal. My power has risen so much because of you. He would then transform into a Super Saiyan 2 as well. And he would then fight back, overpowering Gohan. Gohan would then fall to the ground as Gohan would see animals around running away and fear. Gohan knows that he has no choice, but if he does this, he'll lose control. He would then actually tell Goku Black what really happened. It wasn't Majin Buu who actually killed everyone on the planet. It was himself. Boo did overpower the spirit bomb, and Kid Boo was able to defeat Goku and Vegeta. But once when Kid Boo actually came to Earth, he killed Videl and the others. Gohan was powerless to stop it in that moment, and it would make him snap. As then, he would turn into a beast, something he couldn't control. 
he let the rage and the monster inside take over. He would then snap and kill Majin Buu, but his rage was so much that he couldn't stop. Everything was a threat. He would kill everyone around him, destroying all life on planet Earth. Gohan, since then, has been living the rest of his life in remorse and guilt. Living in guilt for what he has done, Gohan could never forgive himself. Gohan has even tried thinking of offing himself, but that's too nice of a way to go. Gohan here is trying to be better, and stopping Goku Black, and saving all these creatures on the planet, because since most of the humans are all gone, the main thing that took over was dinosaurs and other creatures have taken over the planet now, with Gohan kind of being the last of his kind. He was the last Saiyan of the Broly, and he was the last person living on Earth. But Gohan will do everything in his power to stop this monster. Sometimes it takes a monster to kill a monster. Gohan would begin powering up, screaming as his hair would grow much larger and turn white. As his eyes would be glowing red, Gohan would then turn into his beast form. Gohan was out of control at this point. Every slip of humanity was gone. Since Gohan had learned to train more like a human than a Saiyan like original, but Beast, Gohan has nothing in him. The Beast has taken over Gohan, as there was no humanity left within him. He was just a rabid monster. Gohan would then fly right in and nearly kill Goku Black, overpowering him easily. He would then grab Goku Black and nearly break his back, like Goku did to Frieza, and throw him into the planet Earth. Goku Black would then stand up, his top G was torn off, thus leaving his undershirt, he would then be delighted. As this is what he wanted. He was amazed that mortals can grow this much in power, but he is more than that. He's not a mindless creature. He would begin powering up as the sky would then turn black. He would be able to then transform into Super Saiyan Rose. On top of the fact that he got a bigger Zenkai as well, Goku Black would then battle this version of Beast Gohan, and with Gohan being mindless, Goku Black would use his techniques to overwhelm Beast Gohan, as Beast Gohan was quickly losing power. With him quickly losing power, Goku Black was able to fire a full power Black Rose Kamehameha wave, hitting Gohan full force. Gohan would then crash into a crater and nearly be killed, but then Goku Black would then lose his form, having no energy left. He's satisfied enough, as this mortal's living a life worse than death itself, but he wouldn't mind just killing him, as all mortals must be terminated. Before he could, the Time Ring would then force Goku Black to come back. As then, after this, Goku Black would know to keep this noted. He would then travel around time, battling all different kinds of beings and creatures and monsters, to the point to where over the next time, he would be able to even kill Beerus on his own. He would search for other beings who were like him, or to use them, of course, who are ruined, who are evil, easily took control for his motives to kill all mortals. And then, of course, once when they've met their purpose, he'll kill them next. During his search, he would actually learn of Toa, who was in hiding, who upon meeting her, he would then learn to team up with her. Thus, with her help, finding these evil beings all around different timelines. Now, these beings share similarities with other versions of the characters that we know, such as a strange Saiyan in a mask. There was an evil version of Vegeta from a different timeline, a an evil Namekian reminds us of Piccolo, and even Gohan from dark timelines, all banished from other timelines as well, because they were too dangerous. Once she did, once when her use was up and she made them even stronger, with the help of magic, Goku Black would then kill her, and he would then regain control of the four and command them for his own personal gain. Now back to Goku and Trunks, the duo would see Goku Black has made his move, as he would send two beings to planet Earth. Now on Earth, Vegeta just finished up a light training session, but he would sense that something was arriving. He would then leave, wearing his armor, he would then land alongside Gohan, and see that there was a version of him, but he was different. His eyes were all black and his pupils were red. He was evil. He was completely the opposite of what Vegeta is. 
And then, there was a large Namekian. He looked kind of like Piccolo, but sickly and evil. Vegeta would then sense that they're both very powerful, but he would make a t and ask who these losers are and why they're here. The Namekian would state that that's nothing to him, mortal. He's here to take all their power and to destroy this timeline. Gohan would then say that's not going to happen, as Gohan would ask who's he going for first. Vegeta would then walk forward and say that he's going to take care of his fake self, as this is not a real Saiyan. Gohan would then go fight his own Namekian, as Vegeta would then fly in attacking this evil version of himself, the two would begin trading blows back and forth, as Vegeta would be surprised with how powerful this evil version is, but it's nothing compared to the Prince of Saiyans. He would then mock this evil version, saying that he is weak, and that you're not a true Saiyan. You're everything I don't want to be. But then the evil version laughed, saying, I'm everything that you wanted to be. In his timeline, he was able to actually wish for immortality. Thus, making him able to kill Frieza, Kakarot, Gohan, Krillin, and Bulma if she got in his way. He destroyed Namek and destroyed the Dragon Ball so no one else can make the wish. He then ruled over the Frieza Empire, killed King Cold, and ruled over the universe with an iron fist. And, but then he knew that he had to grow stronger. Once when Beerus actually met him, he used Beerus. It was very easy. Just pretend like he was loyal to him, and that he wanted to become the next god of destruction. It was very easy. That being said, he would then kind of learn the Hakai abilities, and but then he would turn on Beerus, killing him. And how was he able to kill Beerus? Because he found out from Whis that the Supreme Kai is connected to the God of Destruction. He was offered the role, which he took it, only to cause chaos and destruction for his own personal gain. With this being said, Vegeta completely went unhinged. Any planet he would destroy. He would then quickly step down as a god of destruction, but we don't know what happens when they do. He would then use the Dragon Balls to make his own wish, to be undetected by anyone. So he travels around, destroying whatever he wants, and being the ruler of the universe. He prefers that over some title work. Vegeta would then smirk and say, that's an old memory. He has more than what he has now, and he's not weak because of it. The evil version would then power up, transforming into a different version of Super Saiyan Blue. It was corrupted. It was a purplish red and black. He would start to overpower Vegeta until Vegeta would then catch his fist and state that he will never become like him. He has his pride. He's not some loser who can't handle it. As then, Vegeta would then transform into Blue Evolution. But there was a problem. This version was immortal. So whatever damage that he did, it wasn't really affecting him. Now back on the Gohan, he was battling this Namekian. The Namekian stayed quiet as he battled with Gohan. Gohan in Super Saiyan 2 was able to fight this Namekian pretty equally. The Namekian would state that he turned on his people. Because of all those years ago, when a Namekian left their people and he split into two. This was Demon King Piccolo, but he won, forcing Kami to fuse with him, taking the power back, and wishing for immortality. Now, okay, we all know this, this was his main goal was wish for mortality, but this version wished for his youth to be immense, so meaning that he can never grow old. So he couldn't, you know, so he can die of natural causes, but he can't die of age. After he ruled over the planet, he finally decided to go home fighting the spaceship. He would return home and kill all the Namekians in his way. He would be able to use the Dragon Balls to make his own personal wish, thus making him a very dangerous threat. Gohan would say that you're evil and there's nothing else more about it. With the fact that he also has Toa's magic, he's stronger than ever, powering up and actually growing into a giant. Gohan would then turn into Mystic fight this giant, knocking him around. Gohan would then tap into his inner self as he would then fight this Namekian with everything that he has to his standstill, while Vegeta was in trouble, as this version was only growing stronger as he's immortal. 
He would then have Vegeta on his knees and tell him that he is the true king of the Saiyans. You are nothing to me. Vegeta would then grab his boot and throw him backwards. As Vegeta will show him that he doesn't need to be a king when he is a destroyer. Vegeta would then transform into Ultra Ego. Shocking this being as he heard about it from Beerus' training. But he wasn't able to access it before he went to go kill the Kai. Vegeta would state, and that's where you're wrong. You got too cocky and confident. You thought that you were strong enough and not to learn new techniques. For me, for the first time in my life, I had to swallow my own pride. When I thought that was the only thing that kept me going. And learn from others when I knew that I needed to. I thought that I could learn all on my own. But after fighting a Saiyan who's much stronger than I am, I learn from my mistakes. And with this power, I will destroy you. This version of Vegeta was not going down without a fight, as the evil version of Vegeta would then fire a full power evil Gallic gun, which this version would then easily catch it and deflect the attack. He would then fly in full force, and he would then use a full power Hakai, hitting the evil version of himself, who blasted half of his arm off, destroying it. Vegeta would say, you're more durable than I thought, then I'll just use my real strength and kill. Before he could, the evil version would finally be able to escape just in time. With the evil Namekian also on the losing end too, he would then escape. Now, with Goku and Trunks, they would then see that Goku Black has then appeared, as they found him with this weird masked Saiyan. And somebody else. Goku Black would then smirk and tell them to handle the situation, as he has a job to go do. He would then leave. Now, with Goku Black leaving, this is when Goku would then fight this weird masked Saiyan, who he seems familiar. Trunks would then battle another Saiyan. He would then quickly realize that he was missing an arm. It was an evil, corrupted version of future Gohan, enhanced by Toa's magic. Trunks was now mentally struggling because this was his master. Everything to him, Gohan. So Gohan was hitting the upper hand of Trunks, as with Goku battling this version of a masked Saiyan, Goku would then power up into Super Saiyan God and deliver a powerful punch to his face, shattering the mask. He would then be surprised to see that it was himself, in a way. But he was different. He had a scar on his face, and but he, but he looked just like him. It was Bardock. He was still captured by Toe like the original and he was kept under her control. Bardock would then take a second to compose himself, as he would then be confused looking around. He would quickly figure out what happened, as he would then thank his son, which shot Goku. Goku says, you're my father, which Bardock would then nod and say, all those years ago, I had visions that Frieza was gonna destroy planet Vegeta, and I knew that you were destined to defeat him, and you're destined for better things. So I decided to send you to planet Earth and fight Frieza one last time to distract him from you. Goku would be hit with a flooding of emotions as his father would actually hug him. As Goku never felt a true fatherly hug before other than Grandpa Gohan. Goku would even have a tear fullness form as he would thank his father and Bardock would tell him how proud he is of his son. He's grown far stronger than he could have ever imagined. Now Bardock has a bone to pick with that Goku Black, as he is not his son. He's a Kai who stole his son's power and is using it to rule over others. Goku would then turn, seeing Trunks struggling and having tears as he was battling this future version of Gohan. Trunks would then charge up a burning attack at Gohan who was on the ground defeated to end him. Trunks just couldn't do it, as then the future Gohan had a flash of being normal and tells Trunks to do it. I'm proud of you. You need to stop me. This is when Trunks would then stop the attack and tell Gohan to fight it. Don't let them win. He can't win. With the most struggle he's ever had, Gohan would be able to defeat Toa's magic, being beaten enough, and he was able to defeat it. Gohan would then have a moment with Trunks, showing how proud he was of him. Very similar to that Xenoverse 2 scene when Trunks met future Gohan in the future timeline, with how proud he was of Trunks. 
And that he's doing so much good. Trunks would be emotional and he would hug his few more master. After this was done, Trunks would then ask Bardock to come join him to help keep the Time Patroller safe and to make sure Canton City is safe. Bardock would then agree, as that's the least that he owes. Goku and Gohan would then return to their timeline, as seeing Vegeta and Gohan catching them up on what's happening, this is when Goku Black would then make his appearance. Goku Black would smirk, as he was waiting for all of them to have their fun. And now it was time for his Zero Mortal plan. The other two beings who were around Goku Black, with the help of Toa's magic that was already ready, everything was perfectly in plan. Goku Black would then extend his hands as they would then fuse into Goku Black, making a new being. This being, you could say, is a version of Merge Zamasu, so we're going to call him that, was so powerful, he shook all the universes. Goku would then be ready as all the Z Fighters would go, all attacking Merge Zamasu at the same time. But his power was too much. This entire time, they had energy siphoning. This means that the two beings that fought, and same with Bardock and even Gohan, absorbed the being's power, making Goku Black far stronger than he's ever been before. Now with Merge Zamasu plus the fusion on top of that, it's very powerful. Vegeta would then showcase Ultra Ego, and Gohan was in Mystic. This is when Bardock and the others would all appear, even Raditz would appear, and Raditz would then showcase a new form as well. With the fact that Vegeta evolved, Raditz wants to train in his own way, push the power to new heights. Raditz would then turn into Blue Evolution. With the fact that Gohan was in a mystic form, Gohan would then showcase a power that he's been trying to learn as well. Remember this, Gohan's been training just like how Goku has. Gohan was able to use the beast form as well. All of them attacking this version of Merge Masu, being able to battle this version. Goku would then quickly be outmatched, as Merge Zamasu was only growing stronger, but he was something was happening. Remember that this version of Vegeta is a mortal that fused with him, but the others are not. He's starting to deform and turned into mutated Zamasu, growing massive, the massive fist. He would easily overpower the other Z fighters, knocking him down. Goku was the last one standing, as Goku Black states that he'll end all of this. As then Merge Zamasu would then charge his fist to attack Goku, he would then dodge the attack. As then Goku would then tap into a power he didn't think he needed to. Now far off in the distance, someone was watching this whole thing go down. It was Beerus. And Beerus would tell Whis that if Goku loses, he'll step in and kill that thing. If he needs to. But he wants to see what Goku has. And see if Whis' training actually paid off. Whis would laugh and say that, oh, he did turn into this in the Whis' staff when we trained together, but it's amazing to see what he can do now, especially since he's using it for the first time in battle. Goku would have finally transformed into Ultra Instinct. But then, he would then walk forward as his hair would turn silver into Master Ultra Instinct. He would then fly in, attacking Merge Zomasu, being able to damage him. As the two would begin trading blows back and forth, Merge Zamasu was actually starting to be on the losing end. Goku was easily overpowering this version of Merge Zamasu. As his power level was so high, especially in MUI, Merge Zamasu couldn't do anything to stop it. With this being said, Goku would then raise his hands into the air. He was... Merge Zamasu was puzzled. What is he doing? He's never seen this before. As then... Trunks and the others would then open up all the time rifts as it covered the sky and all around the entire universe and different time rifts would split open. As tons of different versions of the different characters from different timelines would offer their energy to Goku. As Merge Zomasu was mutating more, his power level was only skyrocketing even higher because of the Zenkai's plus the immortality mutation was happening. He would then explain that he will never lose to a mortal. Goku would then have this large spirit bomb. He would then absorb it, only growing stronger as he could barely contain the power within him. He would then deliver into one attack, charging his fist. 
he would then fly in full force towards Merge Zamasu in a final stand and stream Dragon Fist as a massive dragon would then appear, engulfing Merge Zamasu. Once when he blasts right through him, Merge Zamasu would be completely obliterated. Now what about the immortality side? Wouldn't that necessarily work? While you might be right, it is true, but this is not the Super Dragon Balls that he made the wish from. It's a weaker version. But there was still small pieces of Merge Zamasu left. His head was the only thing that was remaining and he was still alive, but he was convulsing and mutating because he was, wasn't full and fully immortal. This is when Beerus would then appear and fire Hakai, completely obliterating this version. Now that peace was finally restored, Trunks, with the help of Bardock, who would actually join him as Bardock has nowhere else to go. Bardock would actually agree to become a time patroller and to help Trunks to handle all time and any issues. Once that peace was finally restored, all of the timelines would then be reverted back to normal and peace would be brought back against all time and all the universes. With this being said, a few years would then pass. As would the Termina power happen? It necessarily wouldn't because Goku would have never gone to see Zeno. Now you can say that this is going to happen right now. Once the Goku and his friends are finally healed up by Whis, Beerus would then scream. As he would quickly go on his knees, Whis would bow as Zeno would appear with the Grand Priest and his royal guards. Goku was surprised as he knows who Zeno is. Remember, he learned a lot and a lot from Trunks. He learned about Zeno and the gods and the angels. Goku would just walk right up to Zeno and shake his hand saying, how are you doing? Zeno knows about Goku and he even thanks Goku for all the help he did with absorbing the world tree and then giving it back. And he'll forgive him with kind of destroying most of the time with battling these versions of himself. He won't destroy nothing. And he actually really, really likes seeing the fight. He wants to see a big fight tournament like that. Something like that happen. Goku would then agree and say, yeah, that'd be awesome to have like a tournament. And Zeno would state, well, I'll let you know if we ever set one up. And the Grand Priest would also give his thanks as well. Now, months would then pass. Goku would have forgotten about it until the Grand Priest would finally appear and tell Beerus about the Tournament of Power and to get his fighters ready. Now, this is when everyone would then get their teammates ready. So first, you would have Goku, Raditz, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, Tien, Krillin, Roshi, Yamcha, Chaozu. All ten fighters were ready. Now, of course, we know that Goku could have realistically wished Frieza back, and you could say that he replaced Chaozu, who's the strongest character. So I just wanted to say all 10, because that'd be really cool if all the Z Fighters teamed up. But for Chaozu's replacement, Goku would still do Frieza, as he knows that Frieza is much more stronger than Chaozu, which to everybody's dismay, they would have to agree to it. He would still go collect Frieza and battle him in his golden form. He would still defeat him, not needing to go Super Saiyan Blue. And he would then agree. In return, Goku would basically bring him back to life. They would all go to the Tournament of Power. Most of the beginning start, as we know that the start of the Tournament of Power, they had the little exhibition matches. Gohan would have easily defeated the Yellow Fox. I forgot his name. He would have easily been able to defeat him. And Goku would have easily been able to defeat Bergamo. And he would have been able to easily defeat Topo. Topo compares his strength like that to Jiren. As Goku didn't even turn Super Saiyan blue or anything. This is when the main tournament would happen. The other gods know of Goku and they're terrified of him. This will be an easy win for Beerus in his mind. All he needs is to send Goku and them in there and they'll handle the whole tournament for him. As then, afterwards, the tournament of power will go much quicker and very differently. Goku would still battle Khalifa and Kale like before, and but this time around he wouldn't really be messing around and he would be able to defeat them. Now, with Jiren, by, both by the forms of Belmont to go attack Goku, Jiren would have a much different time. Goku in Super Saiyan 2 would be able to match Jiren. In Super Saiyan Blue, it would be overkill. Jiren has no chance, and he would have been knocked out of the ring, shocking Belmont with how strong Goku was. Topo would have thrown his pride aside, and he would have turned into a god of destruction and attacked, but Vegeta, Gohan, even Raditz would have been able to defeat him, 
disposed the same way. There would have been no chance. Even Kefla, Goku would have had a battle against Hit, and Goku would have fought Kefla, who fused. It would have been a completely one-sided battle. The Terminator power would have ended probably way less than half the time. With pretty much all the fighters being there, you could say that Roshi and the others weren't in there. But especially, I'm, I'm telling you now, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Raditz, probably Frieza, they would definitely all be there as the winners. Now, with Gohan actually being the team leader, as he would still be appointed to that, he would still be given the wish. Now, he would wish for all the other universes to be brought back, and Frieza would actually be brought back to life by Whis, as it was still Beerus' gift to do so like before, so that wouldn't change. Now, we are going to cut forward into the Broly movie. Broly movie would turn kind of similar, with Frieza finding Broly you know, using him to attack Goku and Vegeta. The only difference here is that especially when Broly turns into Atari, or you could say he turns into, especially into Super Saiyan, Vegeta could handle him the entire time. As even with Ultra, Ultra Ego, he would start to overpower Broly. Now you can say that Broly's power level is continuing to rise, so maybe he could start to catch up to Vegeta, but I think that it's such a massive power boost to Ultra Ego, and he grows stronger the more damage that he takes. Yeah, it would kind of be a one-sided battle. Now, Goku, I feel, would fight Broly first, as I feel like it wouldn't make more sense for Goku and Vegeta to try and swap turns, or you can say that he fought Broly because he attacked him first, but either way, Broly would lose. Now, Broly, I feel, would still be sent back to Planet Vampa by Chi Lai, and this is when Goku would then meet Broly and offer to train with him on Beerus' world like before. Now, jumping into the Dragon Ball Superhero movie, okay, so you can say about the androids, but there are none. But you could say that the Red Ribbon Army is still there, in a way, by Dr. Jiro's help. So, if they did make Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, there wouldn't necessarily be a Cell Max, or you can say there was a version of him but it would not be the same as the Cell Max that I did in the previous What If. Gohan would have been able to handle everyone by himself. Now Piccolo would have already had his Orange Piccolo form, as remember Piccolo has not gotten love. He would have still had Orange Piccolo. This version of Piccolo is obviously a lot more powerful because he trains with Gohan. Now with Gohan, they would easily overpower the Gammas and destroy them. And if Cell Max even appeared, he would have easily killed Cell Max, saving Pan much quicker. The movie would be probably about 10 to 20 minutes long, instead of over an hour. Now, cutting into the Granola arc. And yes, I know we're skipping over the Moro arc. It's all over the place. With the Moro arc, it would be a lot more interesting. Definitely with Moro, Goku was so powerful that if he turned Ultra Instinct and Moro tried to steal his energy, it would kind of be the similar reaction to like the Mirror's treatment to where his power and his body could not handle the power that Goku had. And I feel like Goku and Vegeta would have just been way too powerful. They would have been easily able to overpower Moro, even though he probably could have stolen a lot of energy, it would have been too much at one time for him. And Vegeta can even use the Hakai and destroy Moro as well. So Moro would have been killed. Remember, Goku's still training the entire time. So Goku's only grown much stronger since then. He's not stopping training. Into the Granola arc, the difference here is if Granola does actually make the wish, he'll die. And I'm telling you that now, he would not be able to live. He makes the wish, and the dragon would say that that's beyond my power. You know that if you make this wish, you will have no life force left and you'll die. So Granola wouldn't even be able to make the wish. But if he decides to do it anyway, and be cocky and say that I'll survive it, he'll instantly die. Since to the fact that Goku's so strong, even Vegeta and the others too. And if Gash tried making the same wish, he'll die too. So the dragon basically killed both of the main characters that were causing the issues. So the Granola arc and the Gash arc wouldn't even happen either. What about Black Frieza though? Black Frieza is the interesting one. Frieza would have trained for 10 plus years just like before. And he would have raided Earth and attacked Goku in his new Black Frieza form. Now we don't know how strong this version of Frieza is, but we know that Beerus is stronger, explain on Murata in them, that Beerus is still the strongest. But he was definitely strong enough to one-shot both Goku and Vegeta, and he was not scared of a fusion as well. So that means that even a TUI Gogeta couldn't realistically beat back Frieza. But I feel like Goku definitely teaming up with Vegeta, they could have easily been able to defeat Black Frieza, especially Goku, using Ultra Instinct. Remember, 
He's only been able to learn 1% of it in the manga. This version of Goku can learn much more percentage of it. So whatever you guys want it to think. Long story short, Black Frieza would have lost, as Frieza would have been completely obliterated and sent back to hell just like before. He would actually give Goku a pretty good fight, but eh, he's weaker than a god of destruction. Goku's way beyond that. Black Frieza would not be able to defeat Goku, and he would have lost. With peace finally restored, life can finally go back to the way things were for now. And that is it for this What If series, you guys. I want to thank you guys so much for keeping me up with this journey. You guys have shown so much support during this series. It means a lot to me. I really do appreciate all the support that you guys do. Now, let me know what you guys think down below. Be ready for the movie. Thank you all so much, and I'll talk to you all later.